Mr. Pritchard, so you have just celebrated an anniversary of sorts. You've been in the real estate investing business eight years. You burned the boat eight years ago. People yeah. may not realize, but your story is in this amazing book, 15 Conversations with Real Estate Millionaires. I appreciate that. But dude, eight years. Tell us about it. It's pretty wild, dude. I, I've been investing in real estate longer than I've ever had one job, which was cool. That Ooh. dawned on me the other day. Yeah. So I've, this has been longer than any single job that I've ever held. So that was a nice little... uh uh, a nice little bonus for me, man. So yeah, I've learned a lot over the last eight years, man. And so I always, I like posting stuff like that because it, it's a reminder for me about how far I've come. And I think we were just talking in the the video that we just did about some of the challenges that we've experienced and some of the lessons. And so, yeah, I'd love to share some of the things that I think uh, I've learned along the way and Hopefully they can help your listeners and, uh, and yeah, so, let, so a lot of people watching this probably haven't read the book, 15 conversations with real estate millionaires. They can get it on Amazon, but let's remind people how your journey started. Cause, uh, it wasn't perfect. No, it wasn't, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I was in corporate America. I had spent 15 years in corporate America. I had, uh, you know, something that we haven't really talked about on your channel. Maybe one of these days we'll do a video and dive deep into it, man. I had a really crazy life event that happened to me. And uh, I was in an accident, a uh, car accident that I was at fault in. And it just basically put my life in shambles, man. And it took me three or four years to put the pieces together coming out of that. And that was my foundation and what I got started in, in real estate in 2000, end of 2014, beginning of 15. That was it, man. So mm. I was at rock bottom. And I dug myself out of it. And uh, yeah, real estate absolutely changed my life, man. I've learned so many things over the last eight years. And so one of my missions, and we talk about it a lot, is trying to just take the things that I've learned and transfer them to as many people as we possibly can. And that's why I love coming on your channel. That's why I like sharing my story on social media, because it's a way for us to just give back and show people that there's another way to do things, man. Yeah. What I appreciate about your story, again, I, and I've told you this privately, right? It's it's It would not have been my choice, right? Credit card debt, go all in, burn the boat, leave the job, go after it. You know, you get one, as I recall, you get one deal relatively quick because of a family relationship. Then there's nothing for six months. Yeah. The, the thing I take away from the first part of your journey is your significant other, Jen, Jennifer, you two were in this together. And I see a lot of people in the real estate investing world where, one of the spouses is kind of half in, half out. Yeah. She wasn't. She was fully committed side by side with you, at rock bottom with you, and supported you. And I think if she's anything but 100% on board, you never make it out of phase one. That's just my opinion. I agree. And it's it's interesting. I get that uh, some variation of that question or that issue brought up like fairly regularly from other people. I say, hey you know, I really want to do this, but my husband or my wife, you know, we're just not on the same page. And it's such, um, it's such a big piece to the puzzle. And I think you and I were both very fortunate that we had spouses that were supportive and believed in us. And honestly, Jen believed in me more than I believed in myself when I first got started in this business, you know what I mean? And so it was, uh, it's something that's crucial. And I think that if you're struggling with that, your job is to provide proof of concept as fast as you can. Because if you can do that and you can show, that was a big eye-opening thing. Like when we closed a deal and that money was in the bank and when we got that, that was more money that we had ever had like in our bank account at one time. Like our first deal, I think we had $54,000 or something like get wired to us. That was our portion of it. And I had never had 50, I never, I had, I don't think I had more than $5,000 in my savings account. Well, you know what I mean? And so it was just, it was crazy, dude. And so I think, if you are in that position, the advice that I would give you is get your first deal under your belt, do whatever you need to do that show that you can like back up all the talk that you've been giving to yeah. your spouse. And I think that's uh, I think that's a thing that will really help uh, with that. Situation. Yeah. Proof, proof of concept and communication, right. Yeah. Are, are big deals. And I, I agree. Both you and I were very fortunate. We didn't have to fight that battle or that thing. What I would tell someone whose spouse isn't on board is definitely sit down and talk to them. Yep. Usually there's there's a, a route that you need to understand. You know, somebody in their family got burned or something. You've you've got to go figure that out. Cause I if Olivia wasn't on board hundred percent, that first story on Norris Drive would I would have been toast where the tenant yep. 
needed to be evicted and gave us a fifteen thousand dollars negative surprise, we I would have been out after. I I never would have got deal two. I I think most people's issue comes back to limiting beliefs about money and the way that they evaluate risk. I think that's a big struggle for most people because inherently, you know, you look at it and there's, you know, big numbers involved. It's a lot of money, right? Like I didn't have construction experience and background. So I was coming in, not really knowing yeah, what I was neither. doing. So you start looking at all of that and it makes you feel like, geez, I don't know. Is this really the smartest thing that we can do with our life savings? Should we leverage all of this stuff and do that? Right. And so I think, the, the communication is key. And I think the first thing that you need to discuss is how are you evaluating risk, right? And in my opinion, I think it's riskier to not put the, the onus of your family's financial freedom on you and take some responsibility for that, right? And just, I think most people, what I was doing was just leaving it in the hands of my company. And I was just pushing money into a 401k. I wasn't really thinking anything of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I just kind of thought, it's really kind of silly to think back at it. And I thought like, okay, I guess it's all going to work out. That's kind of what I did. Right. And I had no control over what I was doing. It didn't make any sense. And so I think you yeah. have to sit down and talk about how you're evaluating risk. And I think frankly, it's riskier not to do anything. And so you've got, oh, to I, I, I totally agree. I, you know, I, I speak to a lot of people who have full-time jobs and kind of do this on the side. That's kind of my experience. Yeah. And I keep telling them, man, just get to four. Yep. Just get to four. I mean, if you go to 10 or something bigger than that later, but four would change your life. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Four you don't have to have, that's what I tell everybody too. You don't have to have my business. You don't have to be no. flipping 60 houses a year. You don't have to own whatever, however many properties it doesn't. That's not the goal. I think the goal, anybody can buy one or two houses a year. I believe that. I don't think that there's anything stopping your average person that's out there from buying one or two rental properties a year. I think that's very, very doable if you put some intent and effort behind it. And mm -hmm. in 10 years, you could have 15 or 20 properties and your life is completely different 10 years down. Oh, and completely 10 different. 10 years is going to pass whether you do something or not. That's it. Exactly. You want to be alive in 10 years, no matter what. Yeah. You might as well buy a rental. That's right. Year. That's right. The other thing I love about your journey is uh, you get through it, complete family support. First year was rough. But then you spend, I think, the first two or three years just doing one thing, what now is called wholesaling, right? Just getting that chunk money. Flipping. I was flipping first. Or flipping. So okay. it was only flipping. Honestly, I didn't do any wholesaling because in my head, I thought that the way that you extracted the most money from the deal was by closing on it okay. and flipping, right? right? And I didn't understand how by tying up all your time and resources and flips that really didn't make sense to flip, right? Like I could have wholesaled a lot of stuff that I was closing on, right? And tying up resources, but I flipped for the first two years. And then just through being around, you know, we always talk about the power of networking and getting around people that are doing the things that you want to do. I started surrounding myself with people that um, were investing at a much higher level. And they started to encourage me that I needed to start hanging on to properties. So my yeah. business model shifted in the third year. And I basically took all the money that we we're making from flipping and I started accumulating rentals and we bought 50 rentals in three years. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's kind of, you know, what we did from there. Yeah. So it's crazy. Yeah. And then, and then you've gone and you build a big business, you join yeah. different brokerages and, and basically now you can take any lead or source and you have multiple avenues to turn that into dollars. Um, but it didn't start there. Right. The thing I love about your journey is you didn't you didn't overthink it. You just you knew what you knew and you just got to the next point and you figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what's stopping most people is they want to understand all the steps. This is the question that I get the most is like, what would you do differently if uh, if you could start all over again? Mm -hmm. And all I would do is just focus on finding good deals, guys. That's honestly that's a big thing for most people is that they, they start jumping around and they want to look at different exit strategies and look at different ways to, to make oh, money in real estate. Yeah. And it's just looking and evaluating deals all the time. And you talk about doing the work, man. And it's, I think it's the same thing. I mean, I'd be, I, we're basically saying the same thing. It's like just going in, doing your work every single day, looking at properties, making offers, talking to people and everything else that you want will happen after that. You just have to stay consistent. Yeah. I mean, if, I, again, I, I keep, you know, I do. I it's probably my most common thing. I I tell people to get a buy box, right? Yep. Focused area and look at it every day. And then they go, "What about this? What about?" I'm like, "Stop, stop, stop." stop. Yeah. yeah. Buy box, look every day. Learn average. Then, like, 
Buy box, look every day, learn average, only write great deals. That's it. That's it. That's, Done. That's it. Easy. Just do that. Stop yeah. all this other stuff. Stop. Yep. That's right. Yeah. You know, when you know, five years in, then you could do more stuff. But for the first two years, just do that. Yeah. 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 One of the things I was thinking about this too. I I know you and I are are active on social and we that's a platform for us to really give back. And I think one of the things that I would have done differently at the beginning was been more open about sharing the journey oh, yeah. from the start. And wouldn't you love to do that? Look at your dude, first deal, your second. Wouldn't that be I fun? I think to look social back media at? is cool for me because I can go back and it's yeah. it, it's really does it's a documentation of everything that we've done. So I do like going back and looking like three years ago. Damn, like this was this is what we were doing. Then. I remember that project. Yeah. And I wish I wish I would have been uh you know confident enough to get outside of my comfort zone and start just sharing the journey from the beginning, man. And I feel like. um you know, it's such a powerful tool. There's so many positive things that come from that, but just, you know, selfishly, I'd like to have seen a lot of that stuff because then that way I could really see what Jason, like the type of business operator that Jason was year one, two to where he's at year eight, man. So yeah. anybody that's, that's uh, following along. Yeah. Get out there, share it. People want to see that story. I think people want to see that at the beginning, you know what I mean? And I think, mm -hmm. uh, that stuff is yeah. really, cool. you'll want even better. You'll want to see, you'll it. see it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 One of my biggest regrets is I didn't do the simple things. Like I never took a picture of Olivia and I 22 years ago in front of Norris drive. Yeah. I'm like, you jackass. Why didn't you do that? And then Ferris and then Terrace and then Clinton and then yeah. blah, 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 blah. Cause I could do it now, but that's not Michael at 30. Yeah. Right? That's, that's right. Michael at 50. Yeah. So. It's cool. It's very cool to go back and look at. I mean, we were talking about taking losses, uh, the last video and, I was having a discussion with somebody last week when we we're going through some of this stuff. And I just said, these were, when you ask for this type of business, you also are asking for the problems, right? So you have to be mature enough to understand that like, Hey, when you get to this level that I'm at now, I was dreaming about doing all of this stuff in year one and year two. Right. And it comes with the good and the bad. And yeah. so you have to learn how to take it, man. Yeah. And so, uh, I, I I'm curious, I, I hadn't prepared to ask you this, but I'm going to ask you anyway, if you yeah. add up all your losses, are you north of six figures? Yeah. 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 I mean, not yeah. like hundreds and hundreds of thousands, but like with what we're dealing with this month, if you just put all of that stuff on yeah. paper, yeah, I'd say we're probably right around that six figure mark, maybe just north of it. Yeah. But again, when you add up all the wins, it's not even the wins things. offset the losses, man. Yeah. That's <laughs> by, it. by factors. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And that's it. You have to guys, when you take a loss in this business, you just, you have to get back on your horse as fast as possible. Yeah. That was something. Learn the I, lesson. Cause there's yeah. a lesson in there. That's right. Don't repeat it. That's right. And uh, just keep moving forward. So as you, as you're already the best in the business in my market, I've said that many times and I mean it, where, where do you go from here? Uh, I, this year for me, I think 2023 is a year about, uh, focus. And I know we've talked about that too. I think okay. it was very easy in the last 24 months to lose your focus on your main business. Cause the main business was just kind of going on autopilot, right? Yeah. You know, you just, you, you, you didn't all these mistakes that we talked about in the last video because of the market, you're basically getting bailed out, right? If something took long, you're actually getting rewarded. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's, it's it kind took of crazy a, to if it think took about a that. year, you made money. Yes. Yeah. It was like, okay, cool. So like you, you, your mind doesn't go back and think about like what, like these mistakes and what went wrong because I'm making $30,000 more. It's kind of, it's actually kind of crazy to think about that. Right. And so yeah, well, right. now I feel like I want to just be as focused and as good of an operator as I can. I think that's okay. it. And I think, uh, you know, 2023 like is going to be a year of us just, we've dialed so many things in. I feel so good about where I'm at with my business and my team. We have spent, you know, a lot of time just training and systems and building things out. And now we're in such a nice. good place. So I think for that's us, awesome. um, it's going to be a good year, man. I'm really excited. Yeah. I'm excited for you as well. Yeah. Jason, where can people find you? Uh, Instagram and Facebook guys is where I'm most active. You can go on there. You can go to my website, jasonpritchard.com. Got a ton of free resources for you guys there. I get so many people that reach out from one rental at a time. Love helping That's you guys. Awesome. So yeah, like to be a resource, man. Yeah. Do me a favor, folks. Hit him up on Instagram today. Let him know you came from one rental at a time. So he knows his time with us every other week is valuable. Thank you so much. I love it, man. Have a good one.